before we get to the real meat of the, of the hour, um, I wanted to tell you about two or three things. First of all, coming up this Saturday is the Glow in the Park. That is the uh, Owensboro Symphony Second Street Big Band. It's a free concert. It's going to be in the Sensory Park. If you're not scheduled to work, bring your family. I think it'll be a lot of fun. You'll love the music. Uh, the warm-up band for that is um, Scholar and Sophia Kane, um, a couple of young gals that are extremely talented. I love to see them on a voice one day. You know, they're, they're that kind of talent. So um, anyway, they're going to warm up for the Second Street Band. We're going to have some food and uh, glow in the park kind of stuff. Some you know, glow in the park little um, jewelry and, and silly stuff and hopefully make it a really fun night. So if you get a chance to make it, if you're working and can grab a break or, um, or if you're working in cottages and you can bring your folks out, um, we want everybody to come. So anyway, Saturday night starts at 6.30. One thing that's not on here I want to mention really quick, June the 2nd um, is our 5K race. It starts here um, in the Sensory Park. It's a competitive 5K run. Um, that's a big deal. It's the first time we've ever done that. We've already got over 200 people that have signed up. So that's exciting. Um, and that is on June the 2nd. I think the race starts actually between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Um, so if you're a runner or you'd like to come out, I think they're going to have bounce houses and things for the kids to do. Kind of have a party after the, um, after the race. So again, that's June the 2nd on Saturday. And then what I really wanted to talk about today, just for a couple of minutes, uh, coming up September the 8th, every year we have, well, for the last, this is our 15th year of having our benefit dinner and auction. This year we're twisting things up just a little bit, rather than making it more of a semi-formal kind of thing. Uh, we're having a New Orleans soiree. You said, what the world is that? Well, we don't know. <laughs> no, it's not that fun, so we said, okay, we'll do that. Um, no, actually, um, it will be the same setup in general as far as the fundraising portion of it goes, but we're just hoping to bring a little bit of a party atmosphere to it. Uh, New Orleans cuisine, we're going to have lots of beads and lots of silly stuff, and um, people playing music all around the place, so um, we're just going to light it up a little bit, make it more of a party atmosphere. But the, the primary reason we do this is as a fundraiser, so you guys play a role in that, and you have every year. Um, again, this year we're going to have a contest between departments to um, raise money, raise awareness, and get us some more items that we can bid on for the actual auction portion of it. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the things that, that um, different departments put together last year, we had um, Becky's Beach. That was um, actually in memory of, of someone who used to live here, and they did really neat. They had all kinds of beach chairs and lotions and all that kind of thing, and it was in a, a beach wheelchair kind of a deal. So for somebody with a disability, it was really, really good. Um, we had spa baskets. We had an office laptop. We had picnic baskets. We had a big thing of camping gear that had tents and all that kind of stuff in it. So there's lots of ideas that you can come up with. Um, so we're hoping that you'll help us out once again this year. I'm going to show you what teams those are the teams that we've come up with. We've had a little bit of restructuring, so some of these have changed from years past. So if you can see, it's like cottages A and B with the cues, cottages C and D are together, ICF nursing, clinical managers, recreation, and Crystal Thompson, Teresa, and Lynette are all a team. Dietary laundry and inventory, maintenance and housekeeping, uh, CLO, all the SEL folks. And then each of the therapies individually, uh, autism, WKATC, outpatient, VP, and reception, uh, business office, HR, IT, and transportation, and then admin council, but we're exempt from the winnings. And you say, what are the winnings? The 
department that comes up with the item or experience or whatever that raises the most money will get a party. Um, and I think the folks that have won that in the past have really enjoyed it. Um, we try to have a, a, a pretty good spread and um, treat everybody that will help us out. So um, there are forms that you can fill out. These are available at Betty's <coughs> Um, over in reception, and we'll have some anywhere you want them. If you want them in the cottages or whatever, just holler at us and we'll make sure that you get one. What's the importance of this little form? <coughs> Most folks put together packages that are made up of multiple items. We need this form filled out for every item. So, I'm going to pick on you here. You know, if she's got her her uh, granola bar is an item and her cell phone is an item, then we need two different forms. The reason being, we use this form to thank the people that donate those. Does that make sense? So it's really important to fill these out. Um, it's very simple. It's just who filled it out, address, who do we thank, how much, what was the value of the item. That's very, very important um, so that we can record everything and thank people appropriately. Okay? Deadline for items or packages or whatever you put together is August 20, oh, 17th. Um, so, anybody got questions about that? Again, coming up September 8th, it's at the Convention Center, and items are due by August 17th. No questions? Everybody still asleep? Okay, thank you guys very much. I think Ryan's got some things to talk about here. Good morning, everyone. So for those of you I haven't met yet, I'm Ryan McDaniel with BM Ford here in town. We uh, help with your 403B, the retirement plan with Wendell Foster. And we work with a company called Mass Mutual. I know most of you are probably familiar with them. You've been online, you've maybe called the phone number. If you haven't been online, there's the website. I'd highly suggest you take a picture of it, write it down, go to it on your smartphone right now, whatever. It's a really cool website. It's very user friendly. Um, and there's a lot of good information on there for you guys. So just an update of how the plan works if y'all are participating. This is just a refresher. Wendell Foster gives a very, one of the better benefits I've seen in the workplace uh, plans. And the fact that they match you dollar for dollar up to 3% of your contribution. They also put in, it's called a non-elective 2%. So all said and done, if you contribute 3% of your own pay, when the foster will put in 5% on top of that, okay? There's pre-tax and post-tax. Uh, your contributions can go in pre-tax or post-tax. I don't really want to get into the weeds with that here, uh, but if you have heard Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, that's what that has to do with, okay? So for some folks that might make sense, might not make sense. So if you think you have a question about that, there's sign-up sheets over here. Over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be in uh, a few days on campus most of the day. So if you have questions, feel free to sign up. We can talk about it then. Uh, just keep in mind too, folks, that there's no loans on the plan. So just a, a quick example here of, of what you're getting or if you're not participating, what you're passing up. Let's say you earn $10 an hour, you work 40 hours a week, so you're looking at a $400 paycheck, right? If you put in 3% of your pay, you'd be looking at $12 a week. Of that 400. So it's not going to break the bank to contribute 3% to this thing, okay? But look what you get. Wendell Foster put in $20 on your behalf. So you're putting in 12 of your own money, but 32 is actually getting deposited. Does that make sense? So if you participate, you get free money. You get pretty good free money, as you can see, okay? <coughs> And then if you're not taking advantage of this yet, this chart just shows that it's never too late, right? Don't pass up free money. Don't pass up market growth. Uh, I know it might be hard to see, but the green is somebody that doesn't take advantage of a retirement plan, just puts everything in cash. The one in blue at the top, same amount of time, same amount of money that it was putting in, but she did invest. She earned 6%, the other one earned 2 So you can see the difference it makes to take advantage of a plan like this, okay? Um, again, the next two weeks we'll be in on campus. If you have questions, sign up. There's plenty of spots open still. I was looking at it this morning, and I look forward to talking to you all then. Good morning. How are you guys doing?
So the other day I had to go shopping for our in-service make sure we have all the muffins and treats and goodies. And those of you that know me well know that I despise shopping. I'd rather go to the dentist. I'd rather go to the VA and wait in line endlessly for three hours to be sent home by not being seen. I cannot stand going shopping, but I did have a great time. So I went to Sam's Club. While I'm waiting in line, so many people were there, only two checkouts open, you know how that goes. I see a lady in a, with a cart behind me, the Sam's Club cart. Not that little be Walmart or Kroger cart, the Sam's Club cart. That sucker was mounded up with chickens. I um, mean, it was like overflowing at the top. So I'm waiting in line for like, seems like 30 minutes, so I'm going to be sarcastic. And I said, man, don't cook much, do you? And she laughed and started a conversation about what we do for a living, where we work. And she asked about where I work. So I, I work in Wendell Foster. I am not kidding you. I am not exaggerating at all that every single person around us, there had been 12 people around us, we're talking about how someone they love has either worked here, received services here, or they worked here themselves. And they had nothing but great things to say about what we do here. How awesome is that we have that much of a reputation here in the Winsboro, in the surrounding communities. And not only that, how awesome is it that all of them were a part of our history? And that every day that we come in to work, we're part of that same history. And that we can work a job where we can be passionate about what we do. Now, I'll be honest with you. I have flipped burgers. Can't be passionate about flipping burgers. There's only so much excitement you can get about a quarter pound of cheese, you know? <laughs> I, I've worked at Kroger's. You cannot be passionate scanning items all day long hearing that stupid beeping noise. But you can be passionate here. No matter what your position is, you make a difference. And that's one thing I think we should, in our busiest time of the days, when we really want to go home, we need to stop and think that, hey, at least we get to do this. It's worthwhile. And I'm going to be honest with you, that has nothing at all to do with today's in service. <laughs> that's one to relate to you, my experience there. Today's sin service will be about rights of use, neglect, and hip -hop. And I'm giving you the answer here for number one on your test because. So many people get this wrong. Do I have a test? I will give you a test. HIPAA is about Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. But it's, it's Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. And it's a law that was acted in the early 90s by the Clinton administration. They saw the need for the consumer to have control over their own medical health information. That it shouldn't be shared with somebody you don't want to share it with. And this is any information that is written down or spoken about. Which is tough here at Wendell Foster. Because I've worked in Cottage City for over 10 years. And anytime somebody's sick or in a hospital, you know I want to know what's going on. But let me ask you this. Do I have a right to know what's going on with that person? No. And I used to uh, have an office next to the break room. You hear everything, and all y'all should be ashamed. No. <laughs> you hear everything over there. Y'all should be ashamed. And I know that's the number one place next to a smoke shack for gossip and where we share information. We probably shouldn't be sharing. But if you want to know what's going on, so maybe there is a right way. We have case managers. We have clinical managers. And we have the service recipient themselves. So you can go to and say, hey, I'm curious what's going on. Are you willing to share that information with me? That's the right way to do it. So make sure we follow these rules. Because we certainly wouldn't want our information violated, would we? Did you know that this applies to you also? We have medical records here for you because you do get vaccines. 
or if an incident happens, important to HIPAA, we will not look at your medical records unless it's on a need no basis. So it doesn't apply just to people who live here, it applies to you also. But there's another aspect of HIPAA that is emerging nowadays. Actually, it's been past uh, 15, 20 years. How many of us use computers in our daily work? Raise your hands. Yeah. How many of y'all check your email from your phone every day? Raise your hands. Or Therac? Did you know that information can be stolen? If it's stolen, do you think it's a violation of HIPAA? Yes. Yes, it is. So we have to be careful. One of the uh, most effective ways the information is stolen is by phishing, and we're not talking about phishing for catfish. <laughs> we're talking about people sending you emails that have that uh, risky click in it, that blue link they want you to click on, or they may be asking for your username, password, birth date, so your services don't get canceled. Or it might be from UPS or FedEx. How many of you ever received an email like that? Has anybody ever clicked on one by accident? We're not going to admit it, are we? No. But it happens. A lot of times, it'll look like this. And you see that blue hyperlink at the bottom that says click here? It's so tempting. <laughs> Really tempting. What would happen if I click on it? Who can tell me? It'll redirect you on it. Do you think it'll be to the IRS website? No, no. No, not at all. Somebody that wants my information. Now, who here thinks that the IRS is coming after me for something that they're going to send me an email? Raise your hand. Oh, I'm going to be hearing a knock on my door, aren't I? or getting a registered letter, but they will send emails. Most businesses will not send emails like this. So if you receive one and you're curious and you're really tempted to see what that's about, Google the correct contact information for that business and send them an email. They'll tell you it's a scam. But there are other ways our information is stolen. Mobile devices. Who here has ever had a mobile device lost or stolen? Raise your hand. Who here remembers the days of Palm Pilots? Yeah, some age, but I used to have one. It was stolen out of the parking lot over here about uh, 12 years ago. I have my personal information on it. Who here has ever received a letter from a business stating your personal information has been stolen? It happens. It happens to me twice with the VA. They can't get anything right, can they? It happens. That's why we must fill out this form and be very careful about who should be using mobile devices as this information here. And if you use a mobile device, it really needs to be encrypted. You need to have a lockout on it. And if, you, if it is stolen or lost, you need to have a way to where you can completely wipe the data from it. Just have it to where nobody can use it for any bad purposes. This one, though, this is a little bit tricky. You know, let's think about flash drives being dangerous. But did you know that it was less than a decade ago that thumb drives from China were brought over here from the factory direct and they had viruses on them? So just because you buy it brand new, don't trust it. Now, that was several years ago when I heard that news story. I'm sure more stuff has happened today. Best thing you can do if you need to use one, scan it with the antivirus first. On a computer you don't care about, that's not hooked to the internet. Now, here at Window Foster, we crack down on these because we really don't want personal health information on a mobile device unless it has to happen, especially these. If you're going to use these here, you must go through IT first. And they're going to determine whether or not, and they'll actually try to direct you to Marcina to pick one up that we purchase. And never, ever plug one in that you found on the ground. No matter what kind of juicy pictures you think are on there, don't do it. It's not cool. More than likely, it's a trap. And I know passwords are boring. 
They really are. How many of you use a single password for all of this stuff? There's always one or two in every orientation. And what happens if that password is linked to a checking account? And I steal that information. She's going to have a hard time eating that week, and I'm eating steak, aren't I? Let's be careful and use more ramen noodles. We must be very careful and make sure we use multiple passports for different sites we're on. And there's always one person in any service that will ask me, how do you remember them all? Well, you all know my memory, I can't. But there are tricks that you can use, such as the memory game. You know, the, the joke around the office is the person who writes a password on a post and puts it under their, their keyboard. It's not very effective. It's the first place I can look. But what you can do is write the word respect. That's not your password. That just triggers a memory of starts now. That could be your password. Or it could be just the word in service. And the password could be, Wes is boring. That would be a good password, too. But you see, it shouldn't be anything that relates to you. It should contain numerals. It should contain, really, uppercase, lowercase. If somebody's going to steal your information, make them work for it. Make them work as hard as they can for it. Thankfully, we have this awesome IT team that knows how to fix computers or destroy them. And they advise that if you ever feel like your computer has been breached, whether you clicked on something back then or it's acting funny, go ahead and unplug that computer from the front of the wall as soon as possible. Right away. And then contact IT. Because what can happen has happened to hospitals and other agencies not too long ago, even happened nowadays, is that people are entering our systems, taking all their data, and they're encrypting it. And then they would send us an email saying for only $10,000, they will unencrypt it for us. We don't want that to happen. We're better than that. So summary, be careful. And if you ever repurpose a computer or sell it on eBay or your cell phone, don't just erase everything. Because for a free program, within five minutes, I can pull all your information back on it. You have to override it. If you have a laptop that uh, needs to go to another department here, send to IT first. Make sure they can override it so we can pick it up. Now we're going to move on to rights, abuse, and neglect. Oh, if you have any questions about information security, please go to Scott Sloan, our information security officer. This is something I'm very passionate about. The Civil Rights Act has guaranteed everybody specific rights. But it seems like time and time again throughout history, people with disabilities are left standing in the middle. This guy is really. The change starts with us. We need to help protect and advocate for those we support. So, whose job is it, honestly? protect and advocate for people. What if you work longer? What if you walk into a different facility and you're just a visitor there? Is it still your responsibility? Yes, it is. All of our responsibilities. But how can you advocate? How can you protect those rights? Who has an idea? What's that? Go to management to see something. That's right. Awesome. Show of hands. How many of you at times feel like you work here 24-7? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, we're here 24-7? No. <coughs> we should not be worrying about people when we go home. And the best way to do that is to educate the people that we're serving. Educate them on their rights. Teach them how to advocate for themselves and speak up. Help them understand that it is safe to do so. Because I've had people come in to me in the past that were scared of repercussions. That stops 
whenever we educate people and create that environment where they know that it's safe, it's okay. It's what a foster has no tolerance for this. None whatsoever. To the point where we will not hire anybody that has a history of this. This statistic scares the heck out of me. This is from 2013, only five years ago. And yes, it was a sample of the population, but it was a blind study. How many of you have ever seen the videos about Willowbrook in the 70s? 2013. Now, was that much removed from it then? Probably not. Thankfully, we don't have that history here. That we do this in service to make sure that we stay that way and we maintain a high quality standard. Center quality. Now there are a plenary test. Four types of abuse. So easy answer here. Please don't get this wrong. Who can give us an example of physical abuse? Somebody hitting you? What else? Pinching somebody? Slapping somebody? Being rough? Yeah, rough care. I had a guy at one of these tables over here yesterday that said, when you push him down the stairs, what the heck? <laughs> I guarantee you, those people around him are moving a little bit farther away. <laughs> but yes, that's physical abuse too. Who can give me an example of verbal abuse? Talking down to somebody. Yelling at somebody, cursing at somebody. Telling somebody they're worthless. And I'm really disappointed in you guys. This was your moment to give me the finger. The first in service, somebody right off the bat. There you go, Wes. That's a great example of verbal abuse. Not just what's spoken, but verbal gestures too. Such as when somebody cuts me off in traffic. I'm sorry if I've ever done that to you. <laughs> Sexual abuse, molestations, sexual acts, showing people pictures they don't want to see, having conversations with them they don't want to have. Now leave psychological abuse for last. You can give me an example of psychological abuse. You know, it's a little bit tied up with all the others. It's an act that will make somebody feel intimidated. Isn't it usually repeated? It is repeated. And actually, physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse can all lead to psychological abuse. Right. And here's the greatest thing about it. Studies have proven that the brain does not develop until the age of 25. And any kind of abuse that happens before the age of 25, the brain physically changes. It looks different. MRIs are proven not just with people with PTSD, but people who were abused early on in life. Any psychological abuse, the impact of that stays with them forever. It's scary. That our words can really harm people. Some examples of physical abuse. We all know these. It's intentionally hurting somebody. Or even unintentionally. Something that just has to potentially do it. What oh, verbal abuse is, is how we talk with people. We can use a tone of voice the wrong way, or we can threaten people. We can cuss people out. Check out this statistic. This right here breaks my heart. We teach about this when the CPI training. I'm disgusted. Now, I'm sure this has never happened here when the foster. But the people that live here, they came from somewhere else, right? We don't know their history. That's why trauma-informed care is so important, because what we call behaviors may not be behaviors, huh? It could be somebody was abused. That's psychological abuse. And it causes that anxiety that's not go away, chronic depression, 
the actual changes to the brain itself. Example of this one that we really do not need to be hearing here is, well, if you don't do this, I'm calling your mom. Pretend like we're joking, but you know the frustration you can tell. That's not cool. One, if people live here, they're my boss. They're your boss. Number two, many of them are older than me. How dare I? It's just disrespectful. It's abuse. And we'll move on to neglect. We talked about Will uh, Willowbrook a while ago. For those of you that don't know, back in the, uh, the 60s, Robert Kennedy actually did an interview about Willowbrook, talking about how horrible it was. This state institution's got to change. In the 70s, Ronald Rivera went there. Uh, he was called by a doctor that was recently fired because he tried to get the family members to rally together to make changes there because the staffing ratio was 50 to 1. 50 to 1. Toilets were broken, so people were just defecating and urinating on the ground, and people that lived there were passing by care and hosing down. That was in the 70s. This was a couple months ago. Dixmore, Illinois. I had a heart attack when I read this. Well, I'm trying to share with every training that I do now. This facility had somebody called the cops in the middle of the night. A person who lived there managed to reach a phone. And all I said was help. I was tracked it down at the facility where every single door was locked. They had a break in indoors, no staff to be found. Earlier reports had indicated for a series of months that people have been telling the state that this place has no running water and they're not giving out any medications. They were trying to shut down, but we all know how things happen with government, move slow. And then this happened. When the first responders came in, they said the walls were moving. I'm not talking Pink Floyd psychedelic. They were moving because of bed bugs. Filthy conditions. It took them. So the next day, search every nook and cranny to make sure we got everybody out. This is 30. It was ended up being 32, I believe. It wasn't until several days later that the report came that the administration and the employees had still not shown up for work. I was that much moved for the work. Thankfully, we have a proud history here. We have a great reputation. We should take pride in that. Make sure we never end up like this. They'd like to see any absence of services. And it's preventable. I follow the plans. We have great checks and balances here. We have plans to tell us what to do, how to do it, when to do it. We also have co-workers who are passionate and they care. And I guarantee you they'll put me in my place if I do something wrong. Will they not? Yep. And we have management and supervisors they create policies and procedures and ensure that they happen, just so this more Illinois does not happen to us. But if you ever see abuse and neglect anywhere, you got to do something. It's tough. I had a report somebody last week in my own community. I won't go into details, but I had to respond to an emergency there. Went to the guy's house. It was disgusting. The smell hit you first. He received services, home care. He has breathing problems. Mowed all over the windows and the curtains. A path through the field to his couch, to the bathroom, to the bedroom. That's it. And he relies on people coming into his house to provide services. They're paid to do it. It's not family. The junk piled up in the house wasn't stuff that he crushed for hobbies. It was dirty to pans, leftover food containers. It was disgusting. And then I told my wife when I was making a phone call, she was like, well, you know they're going to know, they're going to know who called. Let me ask you this. Do you all think I care? No. no. Because if that's my loved one, and you didn't make that phone call, how do you all think I feel? How do you think the law was seeing? 
the ideas? Yeah. Is if we see it, we're just as responsible. So, if you see abuse and neglect, what should you do here with a foster? Report immediately. Now, what if I report it? When I see it, about something, somebody get a bath, I just leave them in a tub with the water full. Should I go report it? No. No, I make sure the people are safe. Not just the person that's being abused and neglected, but also the person I'm taking care of. Report. But who do we report it to? Nurse? Who else? Supervisors? Managers? Managers? What if it's just a weird day that never happens, but no managers or supervisors or nurses are here? What do you do? You call. That's right. Wake somebody up. Call them. Text them. Because they want to be here. Because they, this can be fixed immediately. And it will be. You can also call the local state agencies. OIG, Department of Health and Human Services, Ombudsman. And they will respond too, but it takes longer. And we encourage everybody to do what you think you need to do. You can call them. But please, we want to take care of this right away. So let us know so we can respond immediately. Because if it happens once, do you think it will happen again? It's like cockroaches, isn't it? You see one, or there's hundreds. So do the right thing. Do something. Make sure people report it. Go back one. Go back one. So there's that. I mean, I know what Office of Inspector General and Department of Health and Family Services, what's the state? State Ombudsman, they work with nursing homes, they work with facilities like ours to make sure the people's rights are being respected. To make sure that if anything's happening, they are the person that can make changes happen. They can work with us, they can work with the state, but they are there to make sure checks and balances are followed. Thank you. And that's a very generic term, so I wasn't expecting the question. <laughs> Report as soon as possible, not the end of the day, not the end of the shift. Not the next day, but as soon as possible when people are safe. Don't report it. You will be held just as liable as a person that committed the act, both fair or foster and legally. Don't be that person. And there are other ways to prevent all this abuse, neglect, by taking care of yourself. Little Foster has this program called the EAD, Employee Assistance Program. It is free for you. Six free visits a year. And only that is confidential. If you were to go, all we will receive is notice that an employee went, not who went. And we want to know that because we want to make sure that this is being taken advantage of. Because if we don't. If we don't find out that anybody's win, that means we're not putting it out there and letting you know about it, right? We want to make sure you guys get the opportunity to go. And there's no shame in going. I'll be honest, I've been there myself. I've went. Great people to talk with. And they don't judge you for anything. It's awesome. <coughs> but there are other ways you can beat the stress. When you go home, you've had a bad day, you just can't handle much more, talk with your family. They're there for you. If you're here and it's happening, take a break. I will guarantee your supervisors and managers will not fall to you for taking a break. Just don't leave people unattended. Until your co-workers where you are. Take a break. Take a walk. If you drink, don't drink too much. Stay away from the drugs. I want to make sure that's worse. Do something for you. Go fishing, go for a hike, go swimming, or just read a book. But if you don't take care of you, this can happen. I'll be honest with you. We care about you all. But we cannot take care of you as well as you can take care of yourself. We want to make sure that happens. Now, we're going to get out early. So, ooh, ooh. Brief person centered update. Uh, we have been using person center skills at the annuals and admission conferences. Uh, we actually have the trainers coming in, throwing posters on the wall, collecting all the information, putting it into the plan. I've even met with people before their annual to talk about stuff that they have trouble talking about with others. Because when people are institutionalized, 
They will only tell us what we, they think we want to hear. It's not very dumb. So I will meet with them, and this is an issue, by myself, and they will open up, and we will write these things down, and then we can discuss about it at the annual. Also, we're sharing stories at board meetings. We've been doing this for a while, but I'm not sure if you're aware of it. So if you have any really awesome person center stories, please let me know. And this is your moment to shine. If you have these stories, you want to get in front of the board with the person and share the story, I'm there for you. We can make it happen. If you're kind of shy like I am, I even get nervous about this still, and you want to share the story, you're too nervous to do it, that's cool. Get with me. I'll help you. I'll present myself. and still see if we can get that person there to do it. Let's share these stories. It helps energize everybody. The last story I shared was about John and his adventures at Subway. It's funny because weeks after I tell the story, I hear the rest of it. That's how it always happens. John went to Subway. The moment he walked in, this is awesome. People knew who he was. They remembered him. How awesome is that? Where well, we used to have a lot of people here that only have paid friends. Nobody else really knew who they were. But he's gone to Subway enough times consistently where they know who he is. Not only that, when he's sitting there eating this meal, he's talking to everybody in the restaurant. And his table suddenly becomes full as people are invited to eat with him and they come right over to his table and he has a great time. It's awesome. Barriers were broken down that day. A lot of other steps we can take. A lot of learning moments there that we can carry forward. But what a great opportunity that I guarantee will not happen 10 years ago. But John did a great job. So please share those stories. Let's get a moment to brag about what you do to the board of directors. Now, this date's changed. Um, it's, apparently, it's June 14th now. Free food. So I'll see y'all there. You know, I'm all about some free food. Plus, they have drawings. <coughs> Maybe if I uh, eat there, then shave, I can eat again for free. I don't know. I'm going to try. I want to remind people about this. I spoke about it a while ago, but things are coming up for it, and they've worked really hard for this. Do we have any runners in here? Oh, we do. This is the first in service where we've had runners. This is where I tell people usually that I only run when I'm being chased by a bear. And that's why I make sure I go in the woods with somebody slower than me. So I guarantee you I'll get out of there. Ah, thanks for laughing. We're here for you, Wes. I appreciate it. All this information can be found on Twitter Plus website and our Facebook page. Please get that out there. We want as many people here as possible. This is great exposure for what we do. Please leave your tents on the tables. I'll be looking later. Y'all have a great day.